What's going on, guys? This is David Whitney. And I'm coming to you guys from my basement gym. Saturday night. It's like midnight right now. I was watching Minority Report upstairs with my daughter, and she passed out. So I just figured I'd talk with you guys about something that was on my mind. I recently saw a clip from, uh, I think it was an old Alice Jones, um, what you call it, um, show, old Alice Jones broadcast. Now, first of all, disclaimer, I just want to say I'm not some big Al Jones supporter or follower. I used to be a long time ago, and then I seen a lot of things he said where he sensationalized things, completely exaggerates things, and he's misleading and deceptive. But sometimes I hear him say something that makes a lot of sense, and this one thing he said really got me thinking. And what it was, um, he was comparing the cell phone screens to the monolith in the movie A Space Odyssey 2001. If you're unfamiliar with that movie, it came out in the 1970s. I think it was like 1978. It's directed by Stanley Kubrick. He did a lot of, like, if you see Eyes Wide Shut with Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, that's like a look behind the veil of stuff that goes on in these elite circles. I definitely recommend that one. And then um, it's also, it's, the book series is written by Arthur C. Clarke. So anyways, this movie is filled with all types of Masonic symbolism. In the beginning of the movie, if you're not familiar with it, the movie's about like space exploration and man's battle against this super computer, um, like this artificial intelligence supercomputer, and man's battle out in outer space where he's on this spaceship and he's battling against this supercomputer. But the movie starts off in like the dawn of history with prehistoric man, these like ape men, and it shows this first scene with these prehistoric men, and then after that scene, it just flash forwards to the future, to the year 2001, where man is just um, involved in this space exploration. So why is that? What's the purpose of showing us this prehistoric man and then skipping over everything else? What's the significance of that? Well, there's something in the scene that's supposed to symbolize what propelled man on his journey of like advancement, uh, technological and intellectual advancement. What took us from, like, what they believe in these high Masonic circles, what took us from just being these ape men to being advanced humans. What was that thing that took place? It was the first murder. And let me explain to you. And where did the knowledge to commit this murder come from? From off-world entities given through these monoliths, monoliths that they place on Earth. The monolith does look like the cell phone. That's why it's got me thinking. It's this flat black rectangular device not device flat black rectangular object so anyways let's um get into more detail about the beginning of this movie so you have these eight men that they would go down to this water hole and you had like this other tribe you had two tribes of eight men and they'd be on the um, uh, opposite sides of this water hole and every day they would like raise their fists and jump up and down and make all types of noises trying to you know intimidate each other or whatever and at the end of the day nothing would happen they'd go off their own separate directions then this monolith appears the book explains that this monolith was given by off-world entities and it was given to impart knowledge to man the monolith scans the ape man and it picks one out picks one it picks one out and imparts knowledge to it so the next day this ape man is um messing around with like a femur bone like hitting it against this carcass of this dead animal now this is also a masonic symbolism because you got the skull and bones and you're probably familiar with the yale um i'm in connecticut i've seen these people before out in their um their cloaks and they look crazy at night next to their um whatever you call it. i can't remember the name of the, the tomb but anyways they got the skull and bones a secret society there but this goes all the way back to we know, like, everyone is familiar with the pirate flag with the skull and bones on it, but that, if you might not be aware that that originates from the Knights Templar. But anyways, before I go down that rabbit trail, just pointing out the Masonic symbolism there. But anyways, he's messing around with the bone, and he realized it could be used as a weapon because he's hitting these uh, the bones on this dead carcass. So the next day, he goes down to the water run hole, but this time, instead of just jumping down and they arguing with each other, when everyone's arguing, he pulls out this weapon, cracks it over the head of one of the other eight men from the other tribe, murders him. Everyone gathered around, everyone's in fear, and now he becomes the, the first ruler. He's the ruler over them. This is a Masonic doctrine, the right of might, the one who's willing to kill. 
there's also symbolism here in the, the what they because what they do is the Masonic, the high level Masonic doctrine is heavily influenced by Gnosticism and Theosophy, and Gnosticism takes everything from the Bible and, and inverts it, twists it around, so it has you following the wrong person. So. Let's compare this movie to things we see in the Bible that the Gnostics um, take and twist. Man was in part of this knowledge that got him on his um, journey of advancement from this off-world entity with a monolith in the movie. Well, in the Bible, we see man was offered knowledge in the Garden of Eden by an off-world entity, this fallen angel, the devil. Another thing that is um, a, a, um, a symbol to the Bible that's also in the movie is like I said so the ape man commits the first murder and he becomes the first ruler now this is a little tricky and I'm not saying I believe in this stuff I'm telling you what they they believe in the high Masonic circles they talk about Cain as the first ruler because Cain committed the first murder just like we see in this movie the ape man committed the first murder and became the first ruler and they do some tricky wordplay that I don't believe makes any sense but they use it and they believe in it so I'm just gonna share it with you but they talk about the name Cain in the Bible, they also say like there's a Jewish last name, Cone, which means priest. So they say Cone comes from Cain and they believe Cain was like the first priest. He's their priest because he was the first killer, first murderer. Also like the ape man was the first ruler. They do this wordplay where they say that in ancient times people used to walk with their canes and when they went into the marketplace, they would lay their cane on the table and they would measure things using their cane. So the Cain was the first ruler and they say that's symbolic of Cain the first killer who because he was willing to kill became the first ruler and now I heard Alice Jones saying this a couple of days ago and I didn't think too much about it I was just like yeah that sounds interesting but then I was sitting in my living room and I'm looking at the flat screen TV which is almost always off I don't really watch TV um, I haven't really watched TV for years unless I'm watching like a game once in a while excuse me but anyways I'm looking at this black rectangle screen and I'm just thinking how he was talking about the monolith this flat black rectangle and I'm looking at it and I'm like we have these things hung up in every single room of our house almost every house in America has these things hung up in every room of their house and I'm just thinking it is like the monolith it's like we're we have these monoliths hung up in our house in every room it's something we like almost it's like we're worshiping it and then another thing that I started thinking about too is something I mentioned. So it's the phone. We have the phone there that's symbolic to the monolith. And the monolith in the movie is what imparted the knowledge from an off-world entity. And then like I compared it to the Bible in the Garden of Eden where it was the devil, the fallen angel, the off-world entity who came and tempted man with the knowledge from the tree of knowledge. So he said, you know, eat of this um, fruit from the tree of knowledge. So now we have the phone that not only looks like the monolith in the movie 2001, which imparted the knowledge from the offer entity, but when we turn the phone around, what do we see? Like I talked about in the previous video, the apple with the bite taken out of it. Now, is this just a movie, just one guy's crazy thing that he's trying to tell us is going on? But it's more than just that, because if you look all throughout history, we have examples of people with high level knowledge who openly admitted that they were in contact with spiritual realms. You could go back to um, somebody like John D, who was um, a member of the court of Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth I. She gave him the title 007. So we're all familiar with James Bond, who's called 007. Well, that comes from the original 007, John D. Now, John D was considered the most knowledgeable man on the planet during his life. He also was very open about being in contact with spiritual realms. He called them angelic beings. The thing is, it's like nobody ever says they're in contact with the other angelic beings, the fallen angels. I don't think the fallen angels come to us like the Bible says, even the devil disguised himself as an angel of light. So this man, the most knowledgeable man on the planet, was claiming that he was in contact with angelic beings, spiritual worlds, spirit, the spiritual realm, spiritual beings. Then you go forward to people like um, Jack Parsons, who is one of the greatest scientists in American history. He worked on uh, jet propulsion. He was a rocket scientist. Another man who was openly involved in the occult, the occult. He was directly under Aleister Crowley and then took over for Aleister Crowley. If you're unfamiliar with Aleister Crowley, 
He called himself the wickedest man on earth. He called himself the beast and he signed all his letters 666. So that tells you enough right there. Now this guy, Jack Parsons, one of the greatest scientists in, in American history, talked about being in contact with these spiritual realms. Now he didn't hide that these spirits he, were, he was contacting were evil. He even talked about um, creating rituals that would invoke this ancient goddess, this ancient wicked goddess. Um, I can't remember what the name was, something like Babylon or something like that. But it's a different spelling than the city Babylon. So now we go forward. So we have these people, like I said, we see in the movie, it's saying that this knowledge comes from off-world entities. We see people like John D. We see people like Jack Parsons. We fast forward until the um, 60s and 70s with people like Philip K. Dick, who was a Gnostic, he, who openly admitted that he was a Gnostic and said he was possessed by a spiritual being. Now, this isn't just some crazy guy saying it because there's evidence that he was possessed by something because he said that the spirit would tell him things that he didn't even know. So this can't be his alter ego or subconscious talking because he would have to go look up what the spirit was telling him to find out what it was. He would even speak in ancient Greek and he didn't even know what the language was. He, th he thought he was speaking gibberish until his wife had to tell him that he was speaking Greek. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Phil K. Dick, this guy is the one who wrote the book that they turned into a movie that's cons considered the greatest science fiction movie of all time, Blade Runner. And that's to deal with these androids and like a future that we can see coming now. And this was back in the sixties and seventies. He also wrote the book that was turned into total recall. He wrote the book that was turned into minority report. He wrote the book that was turned into, um, adjustment bureau. So we have these people with all this knowledge who claim to be in contact with these off-world entities. We have it shown to us in the Bible and the Garden of Eden. We have it shown to us in these movies. Um, we have people like Joe Rogan nowadays talking about that he takes hallucinogenic, um, psychedelic drugs, and that he's in contact with these, these spiritual beings. Alex Jones talks about that there's top level scientists who are taking ayahuasca and DMT and are receiving the technology and that's where the technology forced things like these cell phones and the artificial intelligence and all the stuff that we're getting coming down the pike is coming from. Now, you might say, yeah, Alex Jones says a lot of bull crap. He said that nonsense about Sandy Hook. But well, here's the thing. It's not that far fetched when we look back at people like Jack Parsons and people like John D and uh, people like Philip K. Dick and see that people who claim to be in contact, some of the most knowledgeable people on the planet did claim to be in contact with these spiritual beings. And you see Joe Rogan talking about taking ayahuasca and DMT and that's what Alex Jones says these top level scientists are doing. We take it back to the Bible again. Like I talked about in a previous video, when the Bible says that um, witchcraft is forbidden and it's an abomination and those who practice witchcraft shall not see the kingdom of heaven, we know that the Bible wasn't written in English. So what we're reading now is a translation. So the New Testament was written in Greek. So what are the words that were actually written in Greek that were translated into witchcraft? The word witchcraft in the Bible comes from the words pharmakia and pharmakos. So you see, it was drugs. It was hallucinogenic drugs that they were using for this, these um, rituals to contact these spiritual entities. And that's just not that's not just in um, the Middle East where the Bible takes place. That's all over the world. You look into Central and South America, you have these shamans doing the same thing, taking this ayahuasca, getting in contact with these spiritual entities. So what I'm saying is this stuff to me is not that far fetched. You can do with it what you want. It's just, I was thinking about it. It was in my head when I was looking at the TV and I was thinking about this black device. And there's one other thing that I recently found out about that also had me thinking. And that's something that is called a scrying mirror. I don't, I'm not sure if um, anybody else out there is familiar with this, but I've recently found out about it. What it is, is this flat black reflective surface that people in the occult will stare into until they receive some type of messages from the spiritual realm a flat black reflective surface, just like our cell phones, just like our TVs that hang up in every single room. Like I said, you could do this what you want, but it's just some things that have me thinking. All right, guys, until next time.